Hello again Year 8, it's Mr Cheatham here again, and this time we're moving on from Chaucer's story about the miller to one based on a different character called the Wife of Bath. So welcome to your second video lesson of the school closure period. As I've said, this, le this lesson is about the Wife of Bath, and you've got a picture of her there on the right hand side, so fear do now. I just want you to, to answer the question, what can you infer about the wife of Bath based on her name and her appearance? So what do those things convey about her and her character? It's been five minutes now jotting down some ideas. Okay, so once you've done that, we'll move on. Uh, so today, as I've said, is about understanding the main ideas in the wife of Bath. We'll do this by reading the prologue and discussing contextual ideas, and this is to develop your understanding of medieval literature even more. Now, we can't start reading without understanding some of the key vocabulary uh, from the Wife of Bath, so before we start reading, um, make sure you understand these key terms. So you've got wroth, which means angry, kerchiefs, which is a piece of fabric used to cover the head, hose, clothing that covers the legs, gartered means fastened with a strap or band, ambler is a slow-moving, comfortable horse, wimpled means wearing a cloth wound around the head, and a buckler or a taj is a shield. So make sure you understand those before we move on. Pause the video and write them down if you have to. So, we're going to read through Chaucer's description of the wife of Bath, and if by any chance you come across any more difficult vocabulary, try to work out the meaning from the whole phrase, from the context and the other words around that word. Because um, nine times out of ten, you can work the meaning of the word out um, from the context around that word. So, reading the wife of Bath. There was a housewife come from Bath or near, who, sad to say, was deaf in either ear. At making cloth she had so great a bent, she bettered those of Ypres and even Ghent. In all the parish there was no good wife should offering make before her on my life, and if one did, indeed, so wroth was she, it put her out of all her charity. Her kerchiefs were of finest weave and ground, I dare swear that they weighed a full ten pound, which of a Sunday she wore on her head. Her hose were of the choicest scarlet red, close gartered, and her shoes were soft and new. Bold was her face, and fair, and red of hue. She'd been respectable throughout her life, with five churched husbands bringing joy and strife. Not counting other company in youth, but thereof there's no need to speak in truth. Three times she'd journeyed to Jerusalem, and many a foreign stream she'd had to stem. At Rome she'd been, and she'd been in Bologna, in Spain at Santiago, and at Cologne. She could tell much of wandering, by the way, gap-toothed was she, it is no lie to say. Upon an ambler easily she sat, well wimpled, ay, and over all a hat, as broad as is a buckler or a taj. A rug was tucked around her buttocks large, and on her feet a pair of sharpened spurs. In company well could she laugh her slurs, the remedies of love she knew perchance, for of that art she'd learned the old, old dance. Okay, so you've read and hopefully understand The Wife of Bath now. You may need to go back over it a few times, maybe even Google the meaning of a couple of words. Um, but once you've done that, to test your understanding, I've got a few questions here. So the first one is, what do we learn that The Wife of Bath is good at in line three? I'll put all the questions now and you can just pause the video. How many times has The Wife of Bath been married? Name three places she's travelled to. How do we know that the wife of Bath is wealthy? 
And how do we know that the wife of Arthur enjoys attention? So take five, ten minutes, however much you need. Pause the video now and answer those five questions in your book. You can flip back through the video as many times as you like. And once you've done that, the final activity is to do a P's paragraph about the wife of Bath. So how does Chaucer present the wife of Bath? So don't forget, you can use um, those things from your questions that you just did. We know she's presented as wealthy, for example. So uh, if there's anything useful from the work you've just done, you can bring it in here. And it shouldn't be too hard to find quotes um, about the wife of Bath. So take maybe 10 minutes now and do a full P's paragraph. And finally, once you've done that, read through your work and mark it. So give yourself a medal and a mission. You've got some example medals and missions on the board there. Uh, you by no means have to use these. You can come up with your own one if you want to. But these are just some ideas of how you could mark your own work.